Hello and welcome back. Today I have uh, two distribution amplifiers, both for a different uh, usage, well, other than just distributing. This one is the standard, it's a square wave distribution. And uh, you just put, well, if you put 10 megahertz in, in the input right here, then it automatically gets 10 out of all the others if you put 20 it just puts out 20 and it is uh, or a square or a sign in the input and it will always give you a square out and then i also have uh, and it doesn't have a, it doesn't have its own uh, ocxo so this one doesn't use too much power and that is perfect because i only need it to distribute my 10 megahertz from my gpsdo then I have another one, this one, that's the FDIS-5, uh, it does have its own oscillator, but I'm gonna make this switchable. I noticed if you put an, a signal in, it automatically switches over to the external that you, that you connect to it, that is great, but it still keeps the oscillator powered, so my oscillator will wear and it will use a lot more uh, power than it needs to be. So I will make that switchable. I will make that modification and This one is a little bit different. It has an input and If you put a square or a sign it will always give a sign out and Not only 10 this one is made for 10 only So you put your 10 megahertz in and then it will give you two times 10 megahertz out but it will also give you 5 megahertz out twice, 1 megahertz out twice, and even 100, uh, once 100k, and also uh, 1 per, per second. Um, why I use this? This is because of the Marconi. The Marconi doesn't use 10 megahertz, but it uses 1. So, for my frequency counter and for the 2955, I use, the, I use that. So. Uh, but the modification is about sh switching off the power from the oscillator. If we first have a look at the normal uh, square wave distribution amplifier, uh, if you look from the top, it's uh, not too much excited than just a few plugs and the power circuit right here. Well, on the bottom there is a little bit more, but also not that excited. Now here you have the power circuit. Here I think is just to normalize the signal. And then here are the drivers to drive all the ports out. Because it only distributes uh, directly. As I also found in the other uh, distribution amplifier is that the soldering is very badly done. So I will do that myself again if we look at the other one here's a bit more also the power circuit uh, but here you see that they have the, the oscillator and if you see my other review about uh, this uh, specific this uh, uh, fds5 uh, you will see that was actually very precise and i like that because if somehow my uh, gps do doesn't work would be weird but well, let's say if it doesn't work this is a very nice packet but I don't want to run it all the time because it's not necessary because I have here my 10 megahertz input from my GPSDO so I don't need this and it is using like 300 milliamps and it's getting hot so it's it's totally not necessary and also when when uh, it uses even a few hundred milliamps more when it's heating and and of course it's it's heating goes on and off on and off on and off so it's constantly using too much power and uh, so i don't want that um, i have some space here so i will drill a hole put the switch and then we need to find out where is the where is the power you see this one is uh, a lot more complicated also because uh, aside from you have some dividers because you have different outputs it also always outputs a sine wave so you need to have a lot more electronics to to do that and uh, yeah this is uh, quite quite full so we need to be careful uh, but uh, here we have the oscillator so here we have a few pins 
and uh, well, this looks like the signal. We need to see where the power is. And now I will just uh, do the. Ah, here is a very big trace. This one. This is probably the power. It goes here. Yeah, clear. That is the power. So uh, what we can do? We can just cut this trace because it seems well. It is here needed. So if we cut it right here, that would be probably be fine. So, but first I measure. Okay, I'm gonna show what I mean. Here is the voltage. I put around 12 volts on the well put the, on the device. This is how many amps, and we will put an external signal, and then you could see that the extra LED will go on, and uh, but it should switch off its internal clock, and it doesn't. Well, it's not using it, but I actually wanted to to, to switch off. So if I'm now putting the power you see one light is on one light is on and it's uh, 360 milliamps and if i now apply the extra you see there is an extra led now switch on but it's still 3.5 so if it's with or without the oscillator it doesn't matter too much so now i'm just gonna wait until it heats and then the and then the yeah the amp should be dropping after it's hot so we just wait for that well that was fast it's already dropping and uh, yeah after it has been stabilized it's it's really 100 uh, milliamps less, which is good. And now it's just uh, trying to stabilize. And now I wonder if I put my external signal in, if it's gonna be totally gone. Only a little bit, but not too much. So I think, well, I actually know, it is still heating the oscillator and uh, that should not be and it's all getting hot and it's already very hot these days and i don't like to use the 240 milliamps if it's not needed but because the other one is running in about uh, 150 and this one probably will go back to 180 because it has a lot more electronics but 180 or two, 240 for me is a difference and also i don't need the heat so Let's do that. Yeah, that looks to be right. That uh, this is the power. It goes here. It also goes to the five volt regulator, so we don't touch that. But here is a split, and this one only goes here. And if I measure, that is indeed our 12 volts. So I think I just cut that trace right there. I need to look with my magnifier if it's really only connected there, but I really do think so. Okay, I'm surprised this actually works. <laughs> um, yeah, but as you can see, this trace only goes here and it's quite big. So it is a very easy to make a cut and then we put the switch. I think I success successfully uh, cut that trace. Uh, so if we power it on, it will probably give an alarm um, because it doesn't see a signal. So, but when we apply the external input again, it should switch off. Um, so switch on. It indeed uh, has a red alarm light. We see that the power is super low, so that's good. So let's apply again the external input. Then the alarm should switch off. It does. And now we see we are around 190. So that's uh, at least a few. Uh, it's at least a uh, 100, 130, 140 milliamps. So and it will save us a lot of heat so i will just make this uh, switchable 
and then uh, yeah. and then I think we are good that was very easy just to be sure that it actually <laughs> does work well uh, we see now it is very low power and I just put the signal on the scope and which is exactly 10 megahertz as, uh, as my input and uh, if I put it to the one I should I have a perfectly one megahertz so the system still works and it computes a lot less so we make the switch Okay, that's it. I put the switch exactly in the middle. I put it sideways because then pointing to the inside, it is using the internal. And when I point to, the, so that means the running the oscillator. And if I point it to the input, then it's running from the external input. That makes sense to me, but it doesn't matter how you how you want to do that. Okay, here we have it. Kind of quick and dirty, but I'm not running it on the oscillator uh, like most of the time. Here we cut the trace, but I just uh, put it directly on the oscillator and it goes through the switch. And then here, because the trace goes all the way here, I, I don't necessarily need to go back where I cut because I just need to be somewhere on the trace. So I just put it here, was closer by. And uh, I put it through the hole, so we can still slide it in its casing, but uh, let's test it first. We put it on its uh, first on the external without applying anything, so and then it should uh, have the power on, but also the alarm. Yes, and if we put the external in the alarm should switch off it does and if we take it out again I will run also the oscilloscope on one of the outputs now there is no output because there is no signal now we switch into the eternal oscillator puff we have a signal 10 megahertz almost because it's still stabilizing and we see we have again our 360 and we switch off it will go to fail mode and it will go very low now we put the external alarm switches off we have our 10 and so now the real difference is because it like this and like this is both running on external and the difference is here here we have one 85 milliamps and here we have 350 and nothing changes in the in the device so that is what i wanted to do So that's it, like nothing happened, just a little switch, it doesn't even look that ugly and it does produce a, a lot less heat, that's what I like. And uh, it, my oscillator doesn't attach much, the two distribution amplifiers and, um, and the signal generator, all those little boxes, everything that needs 12 volt is, is running from this uh, power supply as you could see from uh, one of my other videos and then you can get rid of all those little socket switch power supplies right there we have it in production the gpsdo it goes into the fds5 uh, one exit for 10 two exits for one megahertz the one megahertz goes to the 
first Marconi and to the second Marconi and the other 10 goes here to the distribution amplifier one to the HP, to the RHU, to the TTI and to my signal generator and one in the top I put here the oscilloscope and as you see the, the distribution amplifier does have some overshoot but uh, usually it's not a problem because it will just go on the upwards and the energy also agrees so so uh, thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time